Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can combine the flip fluid addon with geometry nodes. The addon will be on sale from August 3rd at 12am central time till August 8th at 11.59pm central time. You can get the addon through the link in the description, so let's get started. You're going to need Blender 3.4 Alpha for this to work because of geometry nodes. The reason for that is because Blender 3.2.1 doesn't have the volume cube node. Once you've installed the flip fluid add-on and go to the physics properties, it will ask you to restart Blender, so do that. Hit Shift A and add a plane. Go to geometry nodes and click on new and close this window here. Delete the group input and add a volume cube. Alt Shift click it. Add a volume to mesh. And let's also add a set shades move. We also need a mask wave texture. Plug the height into the density. Let's set the scale here to 2. Go back to layout mode and let's press Ctrl A and visual geometry to mesh. With the plane selected, press Ctrl 3 to subdivide it. Hit Shift A and add a camera. Go into front view with the plane selected and press delete on the numpad. Press Ctrl Alt 0 to go into camera view and select the camera and press G Z Z to move it on the local Z axis. Let's position it somewhere around here. I renamed the plane to obstacle. Now go to the physics properties and click on flip fluid and select obstacle. Now let's hit Shift A and add a cube. I'm going to call it Domain. Again go to Flip Fluids and now set it to Domain. Now it's warning us that we haven't saved yet, so let's do that real quick. Now let's go into Wireframe view and scale down the domain. Like this. Now let's scale it on the Y, like this. I'm doing this to reduce the baking time. Now let's go back to Fever Chaining. And here in the Visibility Display, let's set it to Textured. Go into Camera View and select the camera and press G, Set, Set. Until you have something like this. The reason I did that is because if we see this face, we don't actually see it, but we can see the fluid hitting the face and we don't want that. Now let's set it back to bounce. Go back into camera view and duplicate the domain. Now let's call it outflow. With the outflow selected, go to the physics properties and set it from domain to outflow. Go back to wireframe view and move it down. And I just noticed that we need to scale the domain up a little more because we moved the camera in, like this. Select the outflow again and press S. Make sure that you can't see it in the camera view. And now press S and X. Go into side view and make sure that it's Bigger than the domain on the y-axis. In front view, let's do the same for the x-axis. Go back into camera view and let's move the camera up like this. Now we don't have it in the view of the camera. Let's press Shift D for, with the outflow selected. Select the duplicated one and press G and X. Move it over here and scale it up on the Z to somewhere around here. Duplicate it again and move it on the X to over here. In viewport trailing, scale the domain up on the Z. As you can see, there is a slight gap between the domain and the outflow, so let's fix it by moving it in. Make sure it's not in the frame of the camera. 
And let's do the same on the other side. Select the domain and here type in bounds. Enable display bounds. As you can see on this side, the bounds and the odd flow are not overlapping. So let's fix that. Now go back into camera view and let's move the camera to the side. Now let's see if it works like this. I just realized that it doesn't really matter how much the outflow overlaps with the bounds because we won't see the outflows in the camera view anyway because of the geometry. Let's save again. With the domain selected in front view, let's hit Shift S and cursor to select it and add an icosphere. Set the subdivisions to 3 and scale it down somewhere around here and move it up. Let's go to the physics properties, flip fluid and select inflow. I'm going to move it over here. And what I'm also going to do is to move it down here. Like this. With the domain selected, let's set the resolution to 195. Here type in whiteware. And select enable whiteware simulation. Now let's save again and click on bake. The cool thing about the flip fluid set on is that you can view the simulation while it is baking. So now if we go back to frame one, we can already see what, is, what it has baked. We can also already create the shaders, for example. Just don't change anything about the geometry of the obstacle, for example, because the flip fluid set on will not take the changes into consideration while baking. It will only do that when you repeat the baking process. So let's go into rendered view. As always, I'm using this HDRI here. You can find the link to that in the description. Select the domain and go to the physics properties. I'm going to go to frame 19. With the fluid selected, go to the physics properties. And now we have a few preset materials here. You can, of course, create your own material, but I'm going to use this ocean volumetric. Now select the domain again and go to the whiteware display settings and set the particle scale from 0.008 to 0.0012. I'm doing this because I think the default scale is too big. For the materials here, let's set it to, let's set the foam to foam, the bubble to bubble and the spray to spray. You may have noticed that the viewport keeps refreshing even though I'm not moving my viewport. That's because of the baking process. I will save again and go to shading. Let's select the obstacle and go into camera view. Get a new material. I will simply make this metallic and set the roughness to zero. And I'm going to give it a slight red color like this. Go to the render properties, go to film and make it transparent. Back in viewport shading, let's add an empty plane axis and let's move it over here by pressing G Shift Z. And I'm going to position it somewhere around here. Go up here and enable depth of field. Select the camera and go to the object data properties and enable depth of field. Select the empty and set it to 1.5 for example. I think that's too strong. So I'm going to set it to somewhere around 2.6 for example. Set the blades to 16. Select the empty again and let's press G Shift Z. And let's find a nice spot where we can position it. I think I'm going to place it somewhere around here. I just ran a quick test render and as you can see the particles are still too big so let's make them even smaller. 
With the domain selected, go back to the right word display settings and let's set it to 0 0.00012. I think it looks better now because I want them to be barely visible, like here. Go back to rendered view and here go to color management. Set the look here to very high contrast. I'm also going to multiply the max samples by 3 and I will use the noise. If you have an NVIDIA GPU you can use both optics or open image denoise. If you don't you can only use open image denoise but I prefer optics. Now go to compositing and enable use nodes. Add a denoise node set to accurate and here enable denoising data to get these outputs. Go back to layout mode and select the domain and go to physics properties. With the flip fluid setting you also have the option to render the animation even though it's not done baking yet. But I don't recommend you do it because it tends to crash Blender. There is this stable rendering option, but turning it on usually won't help. I mean this one. I'm also going to add a point light. Let's set the radius to somewhere around here and move it up and set the power to 5 for example that's too strong 2 and I'm going to move it over here you can also already set up the output properties so I'm going to leave it at full HD and the frames at 25ps I will create a new output folder here so I called it rendered images and if you put an underscore after the name of the images you Blender is going to automatically assign numbers to the frames. You can leave this at PNG if you want to but I'm going to use JPEG. The reason for that is because JPEG files are smaller than PNG. One downside to using JPEG is that what we made transparent here uh, won't actually be transparent, it will just be black. But that's okay for this animation here. Let's set the quality to 100%. And now let's wait until it is done baking. Now that it's done baking, let's save again and go to render, render animation. Now that it's done rendering, you can close this window and go up here to video editing, video editing. Make sure you are on frame 1 and hover over the file location and press Ctrl C. Now set the file format to FFmpeg video and the encoding to MPEG4. Also set the upper quality to high quality. Now here hit Shift A, image sequence and place in the location minus the name. Press A and hit Enter. Now go to render and render animation. So that's it for the tutorial. I hope you liked it. Make sure to check out the flip fluid setting through the link in the description. Let me know what I should do next and I'll see you next time.